back with another video for you today. Today, I've got a special guest here with me. It's Ashley. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you? Doing great. Ashley and I have been planning on doing a series of uh, notes-focused videos, and today we're tackling my favorite note in perfumery, patchouli. Sort of a polarizing note, I think. It's a love it or hate it to a lot of people. But I tend to hang out with people that love patchouli, and Ashley seems to like it as well. So today we're going to find out all about patchouli, plus learn about six different patchouli fragrances that are popular in the world of perfumery. So if you're curious to learn about this awesome note of patchouli and learn about the six fragrances we're going to mention, then please stay tuned. Thanks so much for tuning in. This is Sebastian with Smelling Great Fragrance Reviews. Thanks so much, Aunt Ashley, for joining in. Thank you for having me. Yes, you're welcome. What have you been up to? So um, I just got into Paris about a week ago. Um, I was in Singapore for the past nine months, so I have to quarantine upon my arrival here. So just been social distancing. Mm, okay. I think that's the story with a lot of people, but things yeah. seem to be getting back on track around here. But we haven't really resolved the issue of the, the virus yet, <laughs> Yeah, sadly. Mm -hmm. But uh, we're going to talk about patchouli today. But before we do that, if this is your first time tuning into the channel and you still haven't subscribed to the channel, please click the subscribe button below and also click the bell so that you'll be notified for future videos and giveaways. And great, we're going to start with this focus on patchouli today. We're planning on doing a, f a few videos on different notes or genres, right? We're not necessarily yes. going to going to cover just notes. We'll be covering right. some genres. Mm -hmm. My idea for it was, I remember when I first started smelling, I was so confused on certain topics and I had so many biases. So today we're talking about patchouli, which is a note that I was always very afraid of. And I think the topics that we're going to talk about in the future are on some of the more controversial notes or categories or families in perfumery that I think um, either get a bad rap or people don't know a lot about. Cool. And I have actually covered this particular note many times. I, I, I love this note. I love it in perfumes. It smells great. It's very intoxicating. And um, oh my God, the trail, patchouli trails are some of the best trails ever. And Absolutely. Maybe, maybe that's what it is. Or maybe it was the late 80s when the 60s revival was happening and everybody was wearing patchouli again. I don't know what happened. And but, somehow I think that just ruined it for everyone. Like all of a sudden people decided they didn't like patchouli, but there's so many different kinds of patchouli that I really feel like there, there's one out there for everyone. There is. You're right. Mm -hmm. There's so many different kinds. You're right. So tell us, what is it? So patchouli is an herb um, and they say it grows on a shrub about two feet tall. It's in the same family as mint, the Lamiaceae family. So there's only actually like one species used in perfumery, but it is an herb and it is like a very fragrant shrub. So is it edible like mint? It's not. I mean, nothing's going to happen to you if you eat it, but in traditional usage, even before perfumery, it was always used to fragrance the body or the hair, never in cuisine. Interesting. So I can eat it and I can smell like patchouli internally, but nothing mm -hmm. will happen to me. Exactly. It's just not, <laughs> I'm sure maybe someone's tried it. I think, I feel like a patchouli ice cream would actually be really good. Oh my um, God. Yeah. Oh, maybe we should experiment sometime, but it's not commonly used in cooking at all. No, no, no patchouli chocolate bars. You know how they put weed or, you know, cannabis. Oh, I feel like it. that would be delicious. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's on our next video. We'll have to try yeah. it. Yeah. So we'll where do does like it a come baking. from? <laughs> so um, patchouli, patchouli can be grown all over the world. It's actually very easy to grow, but the best qualities come from where it's indigenous and that's Southeast Asia. And in perfumery, generally, almost all of our patchouli comes from Indonesia. Oh, okay. Can you go on a patchouli trip to Indonesia just to learn where it comes from? Uh, I'm pretty, I know... You know, I work for Jivadon, so I know that sometimes we do excursions to where we grow patchouli. Um, I don't know about the general public, but I'm, I feel like it could probably be arranged if you're in that part of the world. Oh, wow. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
So what part of the patchouli is used in perfumery? Is it like the stems or is there leaves? Are there flowers? It has all of that. It has leaves, stems, flowers. The flowers are these tiny white flowers and they don't have a lot of smell. So we use the leaves and the twigs. That's what gets distilled. I think a really good comparison is if, any, if anyone grows basil out there, you'll notice the leaves and the stems have a lot of that basil-y smell. But basil also has little white flowers mm -hmm. because it's just like other herbs. And the flowers don't smell very strongly at all, which is interesting because a lot of times we think of the flower having most of the smell, but patchouli like basil, it's all in the leaves and stems. Interesting. So we mm -hmm. covered uh, what countries we should look for in terms of quality. So you mentioned Indonesia. So then does patchouli come from other countries that's not as good quality then? You know, I haven't really seen it in mass commercial use. So I've worked with two big fragrance companies and I've noticed most of their qualities always come from Indonesia. Um, and even when I look at smaller suppliers, whether it's like Perfumers World or Perfumers Apprentice, it seems to mostly come from Indonesia. But from mm -hmm. what I've read, um, it, some of it does grow in Madagascar. There's some qualities oh. coming from Latin America. I've heard. Um, so it is grown all over the world, but when you see it being grown largely commercially for perfumer usage, um, it's mostly Southeast Asia and mostly Indonesia within Southeast Asia. Okay. So let's say I have a house with a big garden. Mm -hmm. Can I, can I plant patchouli? Where do you buy it from? That I don't know. So I've never seen, and I, I've, I haven't seen where you can buy patchouli seeds to grow. Um, yeah. I, I would love to. I, think I, I want to I try and find some and take it to my mom and have her plant it in her backyard. So every time I go, these through, are things I should have looked up when I was living in Singapore. I didn't think maybe I could have taken a packet of seeds with me or something. Oh my God. Little, <laughs> oh, it would have been cool. <laughs> that would be fun. That would be fun. So what does patchouli smell like really? Uh, okay. Here we go. So patchouli can be very complex. Um, the plant itself, because I always feel like plants and their oils can actually smell very different. Um, the plant to me is very woody, earthy with a touch of sweetness. And then when they distill it to the oil, I think the pure oil smells very similar to the plant in this facet, rich, quite like very luxurious. Me patchouli is so opulent. It's a big scent. Um, but then from that oil, they can make fractions. And this is what I think is really cool. After refining it a couple times, you can get a fraction that smells like blueberries. So it'll be like very fruity wow. and you don't have any of like the soil earthy um, qualities. And so that's my personal favorite fraction of patchouli, not because I don't appreciate the earthy facets, but I am such a gourmand lover that when they can fractionate it to the point that you get that blueberry facet, it's just divine for me. Interesting, because lately I've been eating a lot of blueberries and there is something <laughs> medicinal about it. And I always find patchouli having like medicinal qualities. So yeah. interesting, mm -hmm. very, very interesting. So what's patchouli's reputation? How long has, I mean, what, what do people think? I mean, we know that it's polarizing, yeah. but. I definitely think for my generation, people are afraid of patchouli. Actually, maybe not even my generation. I think a lot of times like the general public has a really bad association with patchouli. And I know people are sort of like stinky hippies or unwashed bodies or something like that. And I don't, I've never encountered that. I remember that was the first association I ever had with patchouli before I even smelled patchouli, before I knew some of my favorite fragrances had patchouli. I just thought it was going to smell like unwashed bodies and dirtiness. Mm. And patchouli definitely has like a soil facet, maybe a slightly medicinal facet. But to me, that's not all patchouli is. There's a lot of warmth, sweetness um, going on to it that really tempers it and makes it a lot more approachable. Um, and I think the only reason that we have that association is maybe the people wearing patchouli during the time where this association was formed weren't washing so much. And so then they just thought, oh, it smells like BO. But I don't pick up any BO facets in patchouli. The only dirtiness I get is soil, which I think is pleasant. Don't cover up your BO with patchouli. <laughs> 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 yeah, please no, stop no. ruining patchouli for the future generation. <laughs> Let us enjoy it in peace. No, I do get that soil 
quality as well. And I, I, my dad has always been a gardener and I'd hang out with him when I was little. I'd smell the, you know, the soil. It smelled yeah. very earthy and there's a nice pleasant smell about it. Definitely. It's definitely, it's definitely in patchouli. Mm -hmm. So what gives it its smell? Referring to its uh, like organic compounds or? Yeah. So with a lot of natural, especially earthy naturals, you have like your terpenes and your pinenes, but the main ingredient in patchouli that gives it its characteristic smell is called patchalol. So it was named after um, the patchouli plant. And funny enough, usually when something ends in OL, it's in alcohol, but actually patchalol is a sesquiterpene. But the naming doesn't always have a rhyme or reason to it when it comes to volatile organic compounds. Um, yeah, but that's what gives it its smell. And I know that just from reading printouts of headspaces, but for the most part, you can't really find patchalol on its own. So I haven't actually smelled the individual aroma chemical. I was smiling a little bit there because you were mentioning terpenes and something else means. So what, what, what are those? <laughs> um, yeah, so a terpene is a chemical compound, um, you know, and it's been like three years since I got my chemistry again. I wish I could just give you like an out and out definition of a terpene, but I can't. But um, Sounds like turpentine. Yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty sure the smells behind turpentine are also terpenes if it's not just like a combination of terpenes in itself. Okay. Yeah. All right. So uh, is it used in aromatherapy? Um, a little bit. Um, like many essential oils and patchouli is no exception are antifungal and antibacterial. Patchouli for sure is supposed to be a very potent antifungal, which, you know, is useful if you have like athlete's foot or any of those ailments. Um, and it's also supposed to be a very grounding scent. And that's a little bit more psychological you know it does have like that earthy soil quality which a lot of people find to be like very anti-stress mm. so then you do you if you have a fung fungal foot fungus or whatever it's anti-fungal yeah. so you can use it to cover up uh, odors i guess <laughs> <laughs> so and maybe that's uh, also why we have that link <laughs> maybe mm -hmm. um so how is the material used traditionally? We see patchouli a lot in Orientals because it is very warm um, and exotic and opulent. And I think it adds a very mysterious quality to Orientals. Um, and then also sheep res. Like you would be hard pressed to find a sheep that doesn't use patchouli in that oak moss bergamot mi mix. Traditionally, it was more commonly found in men's fragrances. But I mean, since Angel or even with um, Clinique's aromatic elixir, it became very popular in women's fragrances as well. So traditionally, it was more of a masculine note because, you know, it is a woody note, right? Yeah, like woody Polo, earthy. Ralph Lauren, exactly. That's where you would see it more in these classic men's fragrances. And what about outside of perfumery? Is it used outside of perfumery in any way or is it strictly like a perfume related ingredient? It's very much a perfume related plant and I'd be hard pressed to even think of another herb that isn't also like eaten as well as used for smell. Um, but really patchouli, it's, it's largely just used for perfumery consumption. Mm -hmm. Is it expensive then or is it inexpensive? For a natural, it's quite affordable. Um, oh. we, and what's nice is it doesn't have a lot of tox regulations either. So we can use it in high quantities. It, that's why it's Ooh. so, it's such an amazing plant. Yeah. Which makes me really excited as a perfumer is that it's hard to find that sweet spot where, you know, it's not as cheap as some synthetics. It's still going to tap into your budget, but you can use a lot of patchouli and it's going to add so much character to your fragrance and you don't have to worry about it messing with Ephra and it smells really beautiful. So it's a pleasure to work with. Awesome. And mm -hmm. it also complements gourmand so well, I think. Yes. So yes and I'm such and a gourmand fiend. I think that's why I love patchouli so much too, is that it, there is the chocolatey edibleness to the smell. But what is that? See, in a couple of fragrances we're mm -hmm. going to talk about like reminiscence patchouli and psychedelic from yeah. Boy. They don't mention anything that's gourmand added to the notes. Maybe they're hiding, but they have a chocolatey quality about them, like dark chocolate. Pure patchouli oil does have a chocolatey facet to it. Um, I, you know, chocolate I know has a lot. I want to say valerates. I want to say that that's the part of it, the volatile organic compound in patchouli in chocolate that overlaps. Mm. Um, 
Yes, I'll have to do a little bit more research, but there are basically some molecules that are found in chocolate and patchouli, and that's what you're picking up on. Interesting. Learn something new every day. Yeah. <laughs> so is it restricted at all? Like, does Can I just say, though, don't, if, you know, you want to just, oh, I want to smell like chocolate, don't go looking at valerates because they're also found in, like, the odor for feet. It, on its own, it's not a pleasant oh smell whatsoever. But when it's mixed <laughs> with the other things that you find in nature in chocolate and patchouli, smells really good. <laughs> okay. On that yeah. note, <laughs> <laughs> is this material restic restricted at all? Is it limited at all? I mean, is like we spoke a little bit, but does IFRA yes. ha have any regulations on it or? If it is, and I know we can use it like more than 20% in a fragrance, which you would never even need to use that much patchouli in a fragrance. So if it is restricted, it's at quantities that you probably wouldn't even be using. Like you don't really have to think when you're putting patchouli in a formula. Wow, 20% would be a patchouli bomb, huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Beast mode. <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. I mean, honestly, so you... some of the fractions, and you can buy them on some of the retailers that sell to um, the public, they'll have different for patchouli fractions, and you can just put those on your skin a little bit. And I think, I mean, I've done it, and I think it smells great. So some of the fragrances we're going to talk about today, like Coco Mademoiselle from Chanel and also Angel. Yeah. There is this sparkliness about it. What causes that sparkliness? Is it the patchouli or is it the combination of the other notes? Because there's, when I say sparkly, like it's almost like yeah. fizzy, effervescent. Mm -hmm. what, yeah. what, does, what causes that? I think a little bit of the medicinal facet of the patchouli helps with that. To me, that still has like a sparkle fizzle if you know how to work with the material well. But mostly I would say that is the perfumer adding stuff to lift the patchouli because it is a heavy note. And so you balance with that with your aldehydes, with your fruity notes to bring out the fruitier notes of the patchouli. Um, it's very multifaceted, so it's really fun to work with and you can bring out different parts of it. Um, but wow. The fizziness, again, I think it would either be the medicinal facet or something else that the perfumer adds that isn't patchouli based. Sounds so scientific. <laughs> <laughs> you need a chemistry degree. You need a chemistry degree to be a perfumer for a reason. It's it's a whole, it's a science and an art. Wow, yeah, that's why I kind of gave up. I'm not in, I'm not dedicated into creating. I just want to smell great, you know. I know. I totally get that. Yeah. <laughs> so. What type of fragrances is this is patchouli used mostly in or commonly found in? You mentioned orientals. Mm -hmm. You also mentioned uh, sheep res. Anything else? Mm -hmm. I now, I mean, gourmands. You know, that uh, traditionally maybe more oriental sheep res, but now gourmands are the big patchouli holders, again, like Angel um, and a, a lot of other gourmand fragrances. Almost like every gourmand fragrance with chocolate, you know, you can pick up a patchouli note as well. Mm. Okay. So let's talk about some of the fragrances. But before we do that, there's a great, great uh, book slash like a periodical from the folks that make uh, Nay magazine. And this is all about patchouli. And inside it, there's this uh, patchouli fragrances timeline, which is awesome. So if you're into the idea of patchouli, there's also all this like really cool uh, photography on the cultivation and um, everything else, distilling and things like that. So this is a great read if anybody's interested. But that's that. So shall we talk about some perfumes? Yes. What fragrance? Uh, I'm looking at the list. I think the earliest one mm -hmm. on the list would have to be the Clinique Aromatics Elixir. Yes. So this one to me, I feel like is the fragrance that really got me into the idea of appreciating patchouli in the oh, 70s relatives okay. and uh, friends of my mom and dad, mostly mm -hmm. ladies, but I thought I smelled it on men because there is an equivalent of this for men by Aramis called 900 used to oh, wear okay. it. Yeah, it's, it's very close uh, with subtleties. Mm -hmm. um, and I think the patchouli in here, I would smell it off of them when they'd be walking around. It would elevate and then hit my nose and I'd be like, oh my God, what is that? So yes. I didn't know it was patchouli as a little kid, but major uh, impression on this one. So tell me a little bit about this one. Okay, 
The first time I smelled aromatics elixir, I absolutely hated it. I remember thinking it was the worst thing I ever smelled. <laughs> and granted, I was 14 at the time and much more geared to like Paris Hilton by Paris Hilton in terms of fragrances. And it was just on a shelf and I knew I loved Happy. And I was like, oh, well, let me try something else by Clinique. And I was like, no. And I want to say two years ago, I was taking a Eurostar to London from Paris. And I smell things all the time, right? Like I was in perfume school. I now work for, you know, a perfumery. And most of the time when I smell someone good, I don't ever ask their fragrance because I'm smelling good things so often. And mm -hmm. I don't want to start a whole conversation on fragrance with a stranger. People can be very personal about fragrances. But this lady was in, in front of me in line. I don't know if there was a strike or something. We were there for a while and she smelled incredible. And... I was like, I, I have to know. And I, it's been two years, not since have I asked someone what they're wearing. Like, that's how <laughs> rarely I ask what someone is wearing. And she was wearing Aromatics Elixir. And I was like, I thought I hated this fragrance. And it's the best thing I've smelled in years. So it's one of those that I think on paper, it's strange. It smells very classical. It doesn't smell like it would work on the modern day. But on skin, it's so good and it's strong so I can't really wear it like up here but I'll spray it behind my knees when I'm wearing dresses and it's just the best it makes me so happy wow that's right, a classic that a whole tangent. <laughs> it's okay but I think it has a lot to do with body chemistry too because when you're wearing it mixing with somebody's chemistry makes the smell mm -hmm. even better I think right yes yes and patchouli is at the forefront of that fragrance to me that's a really good example of how perfumery was used back when it was highlighted in a fragrance. I think now even with gourmands, you know, they'll really put a lot of maltol and sweet notes to kind of cover the patchouli and focus more on the gourmand than the oil itself. But to me, aromatic elixir, yes, there's like some other spices and aromatic notes, but the patchouli really shines through. Yeah. Anyway, that's aromatic elixir. And I think around the same time this came out, it's mm -hmm. reminiscence patchouli. Yeah. Uh, it's targeted to ladies, but mm -hmm. it smells very close to this. And this is unisex. So why does that happen in perfume world? I think, one, the idea of gender in perfumery, what men should smell like and what women should smell like, changes over time. Um, and so, for example, like woody fragrances, women weren't wearing wood, women women weren't wearing woody fragrances until Shiseido Seminite du Bois. And that was kind of a big paradigm shift in the world of fragrance where now women wanted to smell woody. And so that's why sometimes our ideas of, oh, this actually doesn't smell feminine. Maybe at the time it smelled very feminine, but now it doesn't. Or at the time that was very masculine, but now, you know, men actually really want to smell fruity, which they didn't, you know, when a lot of these fragrances were coming out. Yeah. So yeah. Reminiscence Patchouli is like that dark chocolate cakey patchouli, which I absolutely love. Love, 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 yeah. love the, the smell of this. I so didn't tell me realize the, that it was so old. Like I didn't realize I, it came out so shortly after. I think they're both around 1973. This might wow. be 72 and this is 1973 because I reviewed it recently. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, because I feel like that patchouli smells so much more modern compared to Aromatics Elixir. It is more cakey, and I, I wonder if the formula has changed at all since the 70s, because at least since the last time I smelled it, it is, like you said, it's a very, like, chocolate flower cake. It's not super sweet, but it is quite a gourmand patchouli. So if, if the formula has stayed the same, it was very ahead of its time. So would you wear something like this? Are you? Oh, yeah. You, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> it's so good. So the mm -hmm. next one I think that should be talked about, and I'm going in the – the the years mm -hmm. this one right here the masculine polo yeah dad fragrance this reminds dad me of my fragrance dad all the way yeah so it's tell me cool if we brought back the dad fragrances i would just be curious just because i wear grandma fragrances and i would love to smell some of my peers wearing dad fragrances i don't know how i would feel about it i haven't smelled it i'm just curious just because it was it was a great time for perfumery and um i think value wise you get a really they don't make fragrances like they used to, right? So it's like you get like a very opulent fragrance and it's very different. If you want to smell different, I think it's good to kind of go back in time with your fragrance. 
So this is considered a shipra, same as this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so different though. Oh yeah. This one, this one to me more like a forest with patchouli under there. But I feel also, like. I that one to, mm -hmm, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I find polo to be a lot more anomalic as well. Well, the current formulation is not the best. I hate to say. Mm, okay. When you smell it out of the bottle and this first spray, initial spray smells green and amazing, but it mm -hmm. settles to a very gummy, plasticky kind of a bad animalic leather, which mm, okay. they've done pretty damaging. But nice to have the bottle and, you know, to reminisce on uh, what my dad used to wear because this. Yeah, I didn't realize there were reformulations because when I smelled it is when I was studying at Isipka and we have the Osmotech and so they keep the original formulations. Oh, and so that's what I'm, <laughs> yeah, no, it was very cool to smell. Um, so it's a shame that it's kind of like watered down or gummy or plasticky because I don't recall that at all when I was um, smelling the original. Mm, yeah, it's, it's, not, it's not the best reformulation, but okay. thankfully this has stayed true almost to its original form which is yeah. awesome okay so the next one we're going to talk about is this iconic fragrance right here angel yeah. from mugler so what do you want to say about this one okay i think what's really cool about angel is i guess it wasn't like an instant hit it took it like wasn't. five years to really catch on and i love that the brand gave it its time because now it's so iconic and you don't really see that now if the fragrance doesn't hit right away it kind of, you know, gets phased off of the shelf and then something else comes out, something else comes out. We are not really given the time to change our taste and fragrance like mm -hmm. we were, you know, when Angel came out. So it's, and it, what a revolution it made. I mean, it started the gourmand trend and I'm very thankful for it to that. And I'll wear Angel sometimes, but something about the, the, it's very sweet. And I think a lot of times when people Think they don't like patchouli they think they don't like the patchouli and angel and i think actually what their issue might be is the maltol because it's a very sweet fragrance and if that's not your cup of tea then it's just not your cup of tea it doesn't mean that you don't love patchouli so mm -hmm. maltol tell me a little bit about maltol maltol smells like cotton candy it is like the sugar note it mm. was so Angel is very unique for two things. One, the use of patchouli, but as we've seen, you know, there was aromatics elixir and um, reminiscences as patchouli that, you know, maybe it wasn't coming out every year with a big patchouli, but we had big patchouli fragrances in the past, but the level of maltol in Angel was very revolutionary to have something so sweet paired with patchouli, giving this like chocolatey candied impression was very, very unique. Awesome. Now it's, guess, we see it all the time, but you know, in the early 2000s, very, very unique. <laughs> that's amazing about this fragrance because mm -hmm. um, this is probably one of the fragrances that has left a major impression on me. When I was mm -hmm. going to film school, I worked in a photo lab. I love photography. I was you know, developing photos and I worked in a very rich, uh, wealthy neighborhood in San Francisco. So a lot of ladies come in bringing their, you know, film. And they'd be wearing this. And, you know, when your nose is so used to developing film and, uh, you know, pictures with chemicals and this thing walks in, oh my God, the amazing smell is so good. And yeah. with, again, it smells good out of the bottle, but mixed with somebody's chemistry and Definitely. that whole projection thing and the sillage. Awesome. awesome yeah. Fragrance. No, I, maybe that's the thing with patchouli, because I agree on the paper, I'm not in love with Angel, but on skin, and I didn't wear it for a long time until maybe a year or two ago. It's actually really recent that I started wearing Angel. It's because I sprayed it on skin once. I was like, oh, this is awesome. It's really good on skin. It's so good, guys. This is so good. Yeah. I was thinking I mean, blinkers of that are really good, too. Like, you know, sometimes blinkers are kind of like meh. I actually haven't smelled a bad Angel blinker. They've all been really good. They have been good. Yeah, they've done yeah. some good jobs with this line. Um, mm -hmm. The other thing is, this is a ladies' targeted fragrance. What do you think yeah. about the unisex uh, aspects of it? Hmm. I know a lot of men wear Angel, and I haven't smelled it on a guy. But on, I feel like, for what, and you know me, I'm very unisex. Angel feels very feminine to me just for the level of sweetness. Mm -hmm. But... I also haven't smelled it on a guy and it's kind of hard to tell until that happens. Okay. Yeah. All right. So that's Angel by Mugler. Then this next one, I think this is the, the correct timeline. This is Coco Mademoiselle from Chanel. And I feel like this yeah. might've been 
uh, influenced uh, by this right here. I, I feel can see like that. Yeah. I can, yeah. But this okay. is great too. So sparkly. I'm I've been thinking about, about this a lot, and I think Coco Mademoiselle by Chanel is my favorite patchouli fragrance. Um, which, and I think a lot of people don't realize that it's a patchouli fragrance because it's so refined. Like people think patchouli has to be gourmand or um, dirty, anomalic, whatever. You wouldn't think like, oh, a Chanel patchouli, but that is the forefront of Coco Mademoiselle. We have these citrus, there's a lot of orange at the top with like an aldehydic orange note. Mm. And then right behind it is patchouli. It's not a sweet patchouli. There's a lot of florals in there to balance it out, but the backbone of Chanel Mademoiselle or Coco Chanel Mademoiselle I'm butchering the name. Anyways, it is the <laughs> Coco Mademoiselle. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. You're yeah. right about the aldehydic notes. There's that trademark Chanel aldehydes in there. I can smell it yes. with that patchouli. But I feel like this came after this, and somehow they were saying, you know what, we got to make our own patchouli with our yeah. own Chanel trademark. And, so. and I think it's not as sweet as Angel. You know, instead no. of the gourmand sugary notes, I think they put in some abstract florals. Um, which I think makes a very elegant perfume. I, with, especially with like modern releases, I think Coco Mademoiselle is one of the most elegant releases that we've had, um, you know, in the past, like what, 10, 15 years. It's just so, something about it strikes me so elegant while still being very modern. And I think the patchouli mm -hmm. is what brings the modernity. Yeah. The other thing is I have given my mom bottles of both of these. My mom is obsessed with this one and she loves this one as well. So. Yeah. I guess the patch uh, love runs in my family. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know which came next, and I think it's this one. This psychedelic came uh, next from Jovoy. Mm -hmm. And this one, I feel like, is very, very close with the um, reminiscence. Uh, for me, it, sound, it seems like there's a, a balance of like sweet uh, resinous amber mixed in mm -hmm. with the patchouli. And there's a slight booziness with this one. Also, there's still the dark chocolatiness. But there's, in comparison to this, this one seems like it has everything this has, mm -hmm. but this one has a lot more woods. Okay. There's a, a more like a dusting of woods under there in comparison to this one. So this one comes off a little more gourmand than this, mm -hmm. but this one has everything this has except for that dusting of wood. You don't know this one as much, I guess, huh? I don't. I smelled it once with you, and I remember I liked it, but I can't comment so much on it. It's not fresh in my head. Mm -hmm. This seems to be probably one of the more, more popular fragrances from this house. And there was a rumor recently that was running around that, that, that people were spreading that they said that this is discontinued. They can't get it anymore. And it's like my favorite oh. fragrance for Javoy. And I had to clear it with them. They said, no. That's uh, fake news, they said. <laughs> okay, good. So it'll still so be there. So it's not there. discontinued. <laughs> good. I'll but have to walk great. over one of these days and spritz it on once I'm free to leave the, the hotel room. Oh, they're open. They're, they're definitely open. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Last but not least is uh, this one created by Bruno Jovanovic for Frederick Mall called Monsieur. What do you know about this one? Very, very little. <laughs> So I, one, I'm sure it's, I don't remember smelling it. So this one, to me, smells very industrial. Almost okay. like a mechanic shop with patchouli. It's very dark. It's very, very dark, very smoky. Under there, there's some animalic undertones. Um, but it's patchouli. So it's, 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 it smells different. It's, none of these come even close to this. This is almost like going into like a very dark 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 street of you know, dark patchouli growth like a mechanic shop next door oil and grease and things like that that's what i get with monsieur so it's a okay. little more challenging to wear compared to all of these if you find yeah. patchouli to be challenging to wear then you're going to really find this one challenging because <laughs> it's it's pretty dark so those are the different patchouli fragrances we're going to cover today. Anything else you want to say about patchouli? I think when you start your fragrance journey, we all have a category that we struggle with. And mine was white florals. And I found my white floral. I really think there's a patchouli out there for you. So even if you think you hate patchouli, you know, I highly recommend trying one of these fragrances because 
there is a push really out there for you. And it can be done in so many different ways um, that there's going to be a facet of it that you like. So I do want to point out one more patchouli fragrance for anyone that's kind of uh, new to it and it's less expensive and not so like dark and earthy. There's this uh, French uh, store chain called Yves Rocher and they have a fragrance called Nouveau Genre, this one right here. Mm -hmm. I bought this at the Yves Rocher boutique in Nice last uh, October or September. And in the heat, I was wearing it at the hotel. I'd walk in and out. And the woman that was cleaning the area, she kept asking me what I'm wearing. I got so many compliments from it. And this is a kind oh. of patchouli that is similar to this, but in its lighter concentration, like a much lighter. Mm. So even though you have that depth of the patchouli, but it's a lot more, I don't know, if I, if I look at fragrance, I can see through it sometimes. And sometimes I can't because it's so dense. This is a kind of fragrance, it's so light, you can see through it, but along oh, those, uh, you can see like little pieces of patchouli floating around mm -hmm. the sparkliness. And that's uh, what I get with this one. So this is very inexpensive. I bought three bottles like this from the store for 80 euros. I didn't buy all three of the same fragrance. But wow. this collection is great. And they're created by well-known perfumers. Uh, and this one, uh, loads of compliments the time I was wearing it. I haven't worn much of it now, but uh, anyway. Do you know Yves Rocher? I know Yves Rocher, but I haven't smelled that one. Yeah, this is a great one. Mm -hmm. Anyway, that's my last thing I want to say. Anything else before we wrap up? That's it. That's it. Well, hope you guys enjoyed this video with uh, Ashley all about patchouli. We are planning a couple more videos, and the next few videos will include topics such as sheep breasts, and also aldehydes. So stay tuned for those. If you want to follow Ashley, I'll have a link for her in the info box. But other than that, please do like this video. Please share it. Follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and I'll be back with more videos very soon. Have a good one. Goodbye.